Welcome. Um, it's 9.30. We wanted to start at 9. I am German-born, but I'm Spanish now, and you can see I adapted perfectly to a Spanish uh, culture, <laughs> although I think uh, a real Spain, a Span a Spaniard would have started at 9.15, so I... But I'm a perfectionist, so I <laughs> always want to top it. <laughs> so, no, I'm really, really very uh, overwhelmed and very glad that you're all here today. You are from, really, literally all over the world, uh, from, well, from Australia, from South Korea, from the United States, uh, from Latin America, from Mexico, from Argentina, from Sri Lanka, from, yeah, Europe, all over Europe, <laughs> from everywhere, from Bulgaria, from Hungary, Germany, so from Turkey, um, all over the place. And it's amazing that you yeah, found the way here to the Impact Hub, which is not easy, I have to admit. Uh, it was also an adventure for us the first time. <laughs> so welcome. Why are we here today? Well, uh, we are here today because um, I suppose that you as I, we want to be change agents. We want to, well, yeah, to change this world, <laughs> but in order to be able to change this world, we first have to understand what's going on in this world. And this world at the moment is, um, yeah, very dominantly occupied by changes, by digital changes. And we realized within the European Women Lawyers Association that not all of us did understand what was going on. Some are, were very informed, some are not so much informed. And we, we thought we have to do something about this. However, and this is due to the Euro European Commission, we understood that we can't do this on our own. We have to do this together with all of you. The European Commission in, invented uh, an expression which, which is called the triangle integration. La integración triangular, which is education, innovation, and business. And none of these three pillars works without the other one. And if we want to be innovative and successful in the future and sustainable, we have to work together and we have to understand to speak to each other and to understand each other. And that's why we are all here. We are also here today in the Impact Hub because one of our co-organizers, uh, Wiebke, she will talk about this later, um, they have a collaboration with the Impact Hubs globally. And the Impact Hubs, what they want to do is they want to promote the Agenda 2030. The Agenda 2030 is also in our title. We will later listen to our High Commissioner of Spain what the Agenda 2030 is about and also with our speaker from the United States who will also talk about the Agenda 2030. And uh, when you arrived and you registered, you received um, yeah, a, una carpeta, I'm sorry for the translators, sometimes I switch to Spanish. Um, so you, in your folders, you will find a present from Path to Integrity, Camino hacia la Igualdad. And what do you find there? You find a handbook with 20 units that show you, that give you a tool in order to find like, uh, the integrity within all these changes. And it's a handbook that you can use as a citizen or as a researcher at university or at the Institute of the, of the Woman or at the bar <laughs> in order to understand um, how can we, yeah, have, how can we reach integrity in all our f f spheres, wherever we work and live. Because integrity is what we need nowadays. There are of a lot of uh, disinformation, and uh, not many people are really talking in a scientific way. So what we need is really to understand uh, how, we are, how we are able to communicate with each other in an integral way, with integrity. So if you... I don't think so, but if you happen not to like your handbook, don't hesitate to give it to your neighbors, to your family. Don't throw it away, because you know, <laughs> the environment, we should really be very uh, careful with our resources. 
And yeah, I hope you enjoy this, this handbook and you can use it. If you have questions, we have uh, Tom here from Path to Integrity. He will be at the entrance and he will answer your questions about Path to Integrity. And there will be also Sue and all the other members of the European Women Lawyers Association that will answer your questions all around the European Women Lawyers Association. So now I spoke more than the three minutes that I gave to ourselves. I'm, I want to apologize for it, <laughs> but there was so much to tell you. Maybe one more thing. Um, yes, one more thing. Um, the European Women Lawyers Association, we, are, we will be 20 years old next year. We will celebrate our birthday in Brussels. You're all welcome to this birthday celebration. And what are we? We are a federation of national women lawyers associations from all over Europe, also from the EFTA states. And what we want is really to provoke change. We don't only want to talk, but we really want to have an impact. And to show you that these are not only words, but it's true, I pass on the micro now to the vice president of the German Women Lawyers Association, Oriana. Thank you, Katharina. Buenos dias, señoras y señores. Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the German Women Lawyers Association, I am very pleased to welcome you to the 17th Congress of the European Women Lawyers Association. As Katharina already pointed out, uh, the next two days we will be tackling different legal, economical and ethical questions concerning the status and rights of women in the digital era or to say, in the fourth industrial revolution. The ethical impact on women, the chances and risks of the fourth industrial revolution have to be assessed and shaped from a gender equality perspective. As the clock is ticking, it is on us to react to this change and disruption, going along with the new technologies and the impact on our daily lives. The German Women Lawyers Association also dealt with this topic in the last Congress two months ago. And we mainly focused on highly relevant topics as well for the, or we focus on gender specific challenges of the digital transition in the different areas of law, from criminal law to civil and labor law. As our president, Maria Versek, pointed out, the digital transition is not gender neutral because it coincides with different realities of men and women. Therefore, we, as stakeholders for gender equality, need to actively form the digital transition to guarantee equal chances for all gender. The German Women Lawyers Association was one of three national organizations who initiated the idea of creating a European network for women lawyers and with women lawyers in 2000 with the aim of discussing relevant topics on a European level. We are therefore very much looking forward to the discussion of the broad range of topics and controversial issues during the next two days. And I'm very sure that we will all benefit from the conclusions and also identify quite a lot of tasks to take home and to deal with it on our national level. I would like to end with a very special thanks uh, to the president of EULA, Katharina Miller, who put together this incredible program and managed to bring together outstanding speakers and a variety of stakeholders, or as you just said, change agents from all over the world with their never-ending energy, enthusiasm, and natural charm. Thank you very much, Katharina, for that. So. Yeah, and so you all enjoy the conference and let's become real change agents. Thank you. Should I stand up or sit down? Uh, okay. um, if you don't mind, I, I would like to sit, <laughs> sit down. And uh, um, dear participants, good morning and uh, welcome. Um, my name is Satu Kaskinen. I am the president of the board of Finnish Women Lawyers Association. It is indeed my great pleasure to be here today with you. And um, these themes of the Congress are very topical issues at the moment, I have to say. Uh, our association, the Finnish Women Lawyers Association, 
It was founded already in 1945. And this means that we also celebrate next year. We have our 75th anniversary. And the founding idea of our association was, uh, is still valid nowadays. Uh, at that time, uh, when the association was founded, women lawyers wanted to have a network from which they could get support in their careers. And um, 20 years ago, the Finnish Women Lawyers Association, we took part in the conference held in Berlin. And uh, we cannot take too much credit of founding the European Women Lawyers Association, but we've been very committed to its work from the very beginning. And uh, in 2003, a congress was also organized in Helsinki, Finland, and that was in cooperation with the Finnish Women Lawyers Association. At that time, the topics of the Congress were gender mainstreaming, gender violence, European Union, immigration, asylum, trafficking in human beings. These topics are still valid and relevant even today. Finland is considered as one of the world's leading countries in fostering gender equality, but however, we are far from perfect. We have some national problems, Violence against women remains, unfortunately, a problem in Finland. And uh, equality of pay has not yet been achieved. For example, women lawyers in Finland are paid 82 cents for every euro paid to men lawyers, which is a remarkable gender wage cap. So the aims and purpose of our association is they are still quite valid. And uh, after 75 years, we should still continue our efforts. Uh, for our European colleagues, I think it's quite obvious that the Finland is now, uh, Finland holds the presidency of the Council of the European Union. In practice, this means that the presidency is responsible for driving forward the Council's work on EU legislation, ensuring the continuity of the EU agenda, and ensuring cooperation among member states. I personally work for the government, so I'm quite familiar with this EU presidency. We still have one month left to go. The priorities for Finland's presidency are to strengthen common values and the rule of law, to make the EU more competitive and socially inclusive, to strengthen the EU's position as a global leader in climate action, and to protect the security of citizens comprehensively. Achieving gender equality is essential to fulfillment of all these common values. Finland also wants to facilitate debates on the EU's gender equality policy for the future and strengthen the links between economic policy and gender equality. And uh, gender equality, of course, it is important component of sustainable economic growth and gender impact assessment should be incorporated into EU's economic and budget policy. And today uh, we are talking, and tomorrow we are talking about the fourth industrial revolution. And uh, to the end, I would just like to remind that the, this revolution can be very challenging to aging women. For example, digitalization, artificial intelligence might be biased, etc. So I would say that women should be participating proactively and be integrated in this revolution. Thank you. Before I pass on the, the floor to our third founding member association from France, uh, I realized I forgot to tell you the password for the Wi-Fi, uh, Wi-Fi, sorry, Spanish Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi, <laughs> which is um, now in, um, it's eventos, E-V-E-N-T-O-S, but the E in uh, majuscula, in capital, capital letter, thank you. <laughs> And then you have the barra bajo, Come on. Slash. slash, no, it's not slash, it's the yeah. underscore, yeah. 2019, okay. And uh, our hashtag, yeah, it's uh, event, eventos, yeah, we can write it. If somebody could, it's not on there, but if you could write it, yeah. And our hashtag is hashtag, Yeah, no, it's uh, eventos. 
Yeah, yeah, no, no. It's Eventos with the capital letter E. The, um, it's not the slash, but the underscore. underscore. 2019. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just write it. Yeah, just write it. Okay, I, okay so I write it and speak. So where do, where do you... I can print it down yeah. while the next can one is... Yeah. We can do that while the next person is speaking. Yeah. So, uh, Marie, if you... Okay. So, Marie, continue speaking and we will write it uh, down here. Okay. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, hello, dear colleagues, dear all. Uh, my name is Mary. I'm uh, coming from France. Uh, I'm representing, I'm vice president of the French uh, Women Lawyers Association. So France is seeking to be the uh, startup nation. So we are quite uh, concerned by the new technologies uh, coming up. Um, before coming to the Congress, I thought I needed to read again uh, Jeremy Rifkin's uh, book about the Third Industrial Revolution, which was uh, very interesting. So we are now at the Fourth uh, Industrial Revolution, so great. Um, actually, uh, over the last 150 years, uh, all the Industrial Revolutions bring um, uh, many innovations in terms of uh, energy or communication and both are linked most of the time from planes uh, or to mobile phone computers and so on and internet. But uh, each time uh, we missed uh, the, um, the, to assess and to increase the social impact uh, which it could have on the gender and on diversity. So this time we don't have to miss uh, the momentum and we don't have to miss the occasion to really work on the social impact of the technology. Um, recently, I just heard that a credit card uh, had a higher limit, credit limit for women than for men, for example. Some credit cards, yeah, I won't say who, but yes. Uh, one very big provider uh, did that, just because women uh, shop too much or earn less than men. So that's the new technologies. Or uh, HR, uh, indus um, intelligence, uh, which discriminate uh, CV of women for technical uh, work uh, jobs. So that's unfortunately uh, the backwards of the new technologies. But um, these all are artificial intelligences, but I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not convinced there is anything artificial in that. I don't believe of in artificial intelligence because artificial doesn't exist. There is all, always a human behind the program and a human coding something. And that's where we have to educate, that's where we have to intervene as a lawyer especially to uh, bring them the necessary ethic and principles for living better together in a community. And who better than philosophers or uh, sociologists uh, could do that than uh, lawyers? I mean, we know exactly how to design inter-individual relationships. So we should be able to intervene there and to, to, to bring something for a better living together uh, using the new technologies, because I love new technologies. Actually, it's much easier with that. Um, actually, I believe, I strongly believe that new technologies are almost an opportunity, especially for lawyers and especially for women lawyers. We will be required to intervene. Google and Facebook already put, uh, constituted their own ethic committee because they recognize that Technical people, they just can't design a society uh, and they have a too strong impact on a society. So they recognize that we have to take the lead and we have to intervene that they are really, and this is a huge opportunity for us. And women will be required also. So I am very optimistic in this regard. Ten years ago, we discovered compliance as a way to delegate the liability for the top level. Now we are discovering ethic as a matter to responsabilize everyone in a decentralized world. So um, I think ethic is a new compliance. 
And uh, ethic is uh, really a way to come back to our roots as a lawyers. And uh, I would be more than happy to, to contribute as, a, as an agent. And uh, thank you so much. And, and from our other co-organizer of the event is from the INGO Council of Europe. And, and I give you the floor now. I put your It's a real pleasure to be with you to, to this morning, and it's a great initiative, this meeting that the European Women Lawyers Association asked us to co-organize. All my compliments, and thanks to all those who made it possible. As an attorney at law in France, in France, I'm very happy to be there. The subject is exactly on the Council of Europe's agenda, and for my part, I inform the Conference of International Non-Governmental Organization by a contribution about the dangers of gender bias in artificial intelligence. They reproduce inequality by amplifying them with the addition of a glaring absence of women in the sector. It is a danger for the fundamental rights of women and democracy. Now, here you see the map of the country member of the Council of Europe. There are 47 only. Belarus is not in the continent uh, of the European continent, member of the Council of Europe. What is the Council of Europe in few words? It's a Treaty of London, 49, and it is located at Strasbourg to defend human rights and the rule of law. That is very important. And uh, to promote awareness and enhancement of this element. I don't know. It's going to the, sorry. And uh, it's uh, four pillars. And it's important to tell you because one of the pillars, Committee of the Minister, Parliamentary Assembly, National Parliamentary, there is a Congress of Local Authority and the Conference of NGO, and we are the only world co coordination be, be, uh, uh, being instituted. So we are in the house, in, and it changed everything. I be at UNESCO, I be at New York, it's not at all the same. So being inside changed all. Now, it's a common law of judicial error based on more than 200 treaties. So you always can find a treaty on the subject of human rights and very more. So the most important, you know, Human Rights Convention, European Social Charter, Istanbul Convention, with the committee, with the UN, and so on, the Charter on Education for Democratic Citizens. And there are some other important things. It's a recommendation. And the last one of the most important, and I was in the small writing group, it's uh, against sexism. It's the first definition of sexism is a word in a legal instrument. So it is important that you take it and push in your countries. The gender equality strategy, I was, uh, uh, doesn't work, doesn't matter. The gender equality strategy, it is very important. It's, um, it's give uh, uh, some idea to all the country of what to do on the women field. And to push it, it's very important in all the country too. Uh, now, uh, what, uh, so uh, you can see by that way that uh, we as uh, NGO, we can work because we are in different committee and as vice president in charge of equality of my pillar, I am in a lot of committee, commission, and I can give the, the voice of you, of other members of the conference of other things. So, uh, what is a gender equality strategy? Prevent and combat gender stereotype and sexism. Prevent and combat violence against women and domestic violence. Achieve balance participation of women and men in political 
and decision ensure the equal access of women in justice. So it's really our topic. Project the right of migrants, achieve gender mansuming in all policy and measure. And that is very important because all the Council of Your Work is working at the moment with gender rapporteur on the gender mastering. All, everybody, even the highest to the lowest. And it shows everything. Because when you are working on gender, strat um, gender mainstreaming, you are looking what you are thinking, what you are looking, what is going on. You make a, a, a small deplacement on the left or the right, and it changes all. And it's a work that all the Council of Europe is doing now, and it's incredible. So I find a very important thing for you. It's a view for us, the European Ethical Charter on the view of in artificial intelligence in judicial system and their environment. And when I've been to look, because I didn't know that uh, very, very, very new uh, charter, it's very interesting because it push your country to adopt and respect it, and it provides a framework of principle of our subject. So you can see what is the work of the Council of Europe. I am at your disposal for your organization that uh, is different than uh, the, the, the uh, lawyer, and uh, to, to, to see how to join us, how to work with us, because all what you are working on is important for putting up more and stronger and come back. That is, uh, see you. <laughs> Thank you very much, and <laughs> So our um, yeah, last co-organizer is um, yeah, an institution that I already mentioned, the CLAC, the Global Leadership Academy, which is implemented by the German Agency of Development. And uh, yeah, Wiebke, I give you the floor. Thank you. Thanks, Katharina. Um, <clears throat> thanks for having me. So my name is Wiebke, and as Katharina said, I'm heading the Global Leadership Academy, which is a, a program by GIZ. And um, I want to do something differently with you, because we heard already it's about change, it's about cooperation. So I want you all to put aside what is on your laps, put it aside, and stand up. <clears throat> Please. So, a lot, what else? You can also not hold anything in your hands. Put that on your seat, please. So, this is going to be about that we have to change our perception to face the challenges that are up. So, what I would love you to do now within the next 30 minutes, twice, so it will take one minute in total, is that you turn around either to your side or front and back and you perceive the person next to you but you're not allowed to do the usual because this is all about change so you're not allowed to introduce yourself or to talk but you just look into each other's eyes for 30 minutes and that can be 30 seconds <laughs> no <laughs> are you listening that's good already you're listening so 30 seconds, but that's, that's, that will feel maybe like 30 minutes, okay? 30 seconds, and uh, you can have all the thoughts in your head. Do I like the earrings of that person? Is that a nice hairstyle? Does she or he look interested? Maybe is that a person I want to talk to later on in a coffee break? Not now. And then after 30 minutes, uh, you can nod or thank you in another way. And um, then you try exactly the same again for 30 minutes with somebody else, and then you're allowed to sit again, okay? So we start now, please. Okay, go. In silence, please. Oh, I still hear a lot of people talking. Try not to use words. Well done. Now, second try. 
You got more silent. Did you get that? So let's try again and try not to talk. We are very good at talking, all of us. So don't talk, just look. Again. And allow that to happen. Again, with another person, not with the same one. Swap, swap. Find somebody else and do exactly the same. And all thoughts are allowed, don't worry. Thank you very much. <laughs> now you're relieved. You can all sit and take stuff on your lap again. It's all over. So I just continue talking. <laughs> so that was an exercise on perception, on perceiving your neighbor in a different way than we normally do. It's very intimate, isn't it? So, um, so I suppose f for some of you that might have been uncomfortable, and I'm very thankful that you stayed in that discomfort maybe and were open to the exercise. Thank you very much for that. And obviously I didn't do that just to make fun of you or to have nice pictures, but <laughs> to exemplify something. So um, what we face, the fourth industrial revolution, as Marie pointed out already, is a big disruption. And it's and like disruptions are, they are unplanned. So we won't really know what's going to happen. It's like I'm always reminded of that quote that when people invented the, the car, they actually wanted faster horses. They didn't want a car. And out came the car. And I think the change is now going to be bigger than having cars. Most probably won't have cars anymore afterwards. So it's this VUCA world. And what I perceive at the moment is that people are sort of frantically trying to think about skills, methods, rules, etc., how to cope with that. Yeah? So that's the situation we are in. It's, we know we are already and we will face a very different, perspectively uncomfortable situation, like the one I put you in just now, sort of. And now we need sort of new skills. So that's also what we um, perceived or what we thought about in the German Development Corporation, um, in which framework the program I've been heading since 2012 um, is established, that actually we won't solve the challenges, and then obviously very much related to the SDGs, um, of, that were created with the instruments and the skills of the past. We won't um, face them and then well, find solutions for them with the same skills that created them. So we need new, new methods, new approaches. The question is how to find them. So it needs some kind of new formats for that. So um, it's all, in a way, about the SDG 17, the Corporation for the Goals, which also, to my mind, includes SDG 4 as sort of the gender equality topic is not in one SDG, to my mind, but is a cross-cutting topic. Sometimes that might be misunderstood, but uh, gender should be included in all of that. Um, so, so for us, it's not only cooperation, but it's also innovation. That was mentioned before as well. So innovation means that you have to be open to something. Like all of you just now have been open to try that out, to try something new out. That involves some kind of courage. Yeah. So you basically don't have to be afraid to make a fool out of yourself. And um, you don't really know it's going to um, sort of lead you to something better. You don't really know the outcome in the beginning. Um, and um, maybe you don't know what kind of skills are going to be requested and you don't really know what's going to happen with you. But it's, it's this kind, what we wanted to do in, in GIZ, to create some kind of openness and uh, openness to mix existing silos. So we know it's not necessarily new skills that are necessary or new expertise, but maybe that is all already there and that was referred to as well before. I mean, you're all experts here in your fields in the room. But the question is sometimes that connections are missing, so that we live in professional, regional, gender, aged, 
um, or status silos, right? So you don't really mix um, very well. You all have your professional lobbies, where most probably, in your case, a lot of lawyers run around, maybe male and female lawyers, but seldomly cleaning ladies. Let's put it that way, okay? I mean, they sort of cater to the rooms where you convene, but they are not in the discussion, um, just to, to have one example. So we thought about a format and then we followed the social lab methodology. I won't talk about that in detail now. I can in, in coffee breaks for those who are interested. Where we think, okay, we, we work on these huge challenges. So we've worked on several topics like uh, gender equality. That's how I got to know Katarina and others in the room. Um, or on human trafficking, for example. At the moment, we are working on sustainable infrastructure. Or we will be working on AI and the future of work. And we will be working on corruption. Um, and we think about who is relevant for the system, you know, which professions and which regions are involved. Obviously, we can't picture the whole system in a room. That would be, the room would be not big enough. But like, who are the relevant stakeholders? And then we invite these people into the room, cross ages, gender equal, equality sort of uh, a predicament, and cross professions and cross status. So it is CEOs next to, we had a well-being lab, there were um, American senators in there and uh, Nepalese monks. And those two had to tell each other a lot and learned a lot from each other, uh, for example. So we mix people and then we create a safe space where people don't lose face and they can open up their minds. And that happens to be a method so far that has worked that people can innovate. Because a lot of you have fantastic ideas in your mind or even in the drawer already. But you don't dare because you don't have the connections or maybe in some of the fields necessary you don't have the personal expertise and you don't know anybody who has. Or you've tried and you reached a point of stuckness, you know, somebody, superior colleague, whoever, the system said, come on, crazy idea, that will never work. So it's people like sort of who have the idea who are change makers. It's not that we have to educate change makers, you all are already. And there are leaders and change makers all out there. But it's more like sort of to, we always say, like reignite the flame or the idea that you have and then actually bring that into being. So we've done that in the Global Leadership Academy since 2012, and we've done 14 long-term, from six to 12 months, processes like this, as I said on the toppings mentioned and others. By now, we are 800 people from um, 117 countries with lawyers and uh, social entrepreneurs, archivists, uh, scientists, journalists, what have you. Um, and in the program, it says we are a think tank, right? So let me at end with sharing my biggest learning, because I'm still learning in this whole process as well. When we started in 2012, the Global Leadership Academy was a program in the framework of GIZ, co totally correctly as Katarina announced me, commissioned by the German Federal Ministry of um, Economic Cooperation and Development. So you have a team in Germany, we do some operational stuff on the ground, and then we have people participating, and these then later may be called alumni or something. So like these programs work, right? So that was the mindset I was also working with for many years, until last year, when I had sort of finally understood that the Global Leadership Academy wasn't that program having the alumni, but the Global Leadership Academy was the 800 people. So in the program, you will find some other speakers who also have Global Leadership Academy in their description of what they do. And I'm very, very proud that I'm not on my own within these two days, but it's Natalia, it's Irene, it's Yoni, it is Ellen, and it is Katarina. And Katarina and Ellen, um, who I think is not there yet, are even our regional ambassadors, Ellen for Africa and Katarina for Europe and the MENA region. And sort of we are growing all the time. So that is really fantastic. And if you're interested in more, share your ideas with them or with me. And you can also join. Thank you very much. <laughs>